DJI have released the new goggles Integra for use with the Avada drone and the O3 air unit. And in this video, we're gonna cover the major differences between the goggles Integra and the goggles 2, as well as the big question that a whole bunch of people are asking, are they going to force you to use remote ID? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The Goggles Integra can be thought of as a less expensive version of the Goggles 2. The price of the Goggles Integra is only $499, which is about $150 less than the Goggles 2. In order to bring that price down, DJI have removed some features from the Goggles 2, but when I tell you what those features are, I'm gonna guess that most of them are stuff you didn't even know existed or probably weren't using. The first thing to say about the Goggles Integra is that they will work with all aircraft and air units that work with the Goggles too. So your Avada drone is gonna be fine. Your O3 air unit is gonna be fine. Your Vista and Vista generation air units are also gonna be fine as long as they've been updated to firmware 01.01.0000 or newer. That's the firmware that made that older generation of video transmitter compatible with the Goggles 2. The Goggles Integra are fully compatible with all air units, drones, video transmitters that the Goggles 2 are compatible with. The Goggles Integra have added a battery pack to the back of the head strap. This is something that we don't see very commonly with FPV goggles, but it's pretty common with VR goggles, uh, and it helps balance the weight. Instead of having all the weight on the front sort of pulling down on the bridge of your nose and so forth, uh, you've got sort of half the weight in the back and half the weight in front. The battery pack is rated with a maximum operating time of two hours, and probably that's pretty realistic because DJI is usually pretty on with their specs, but we don't have the goggles yet, and so we're not able to verify that. If you need to extend that runtime, there's a USB port right here. The goggles can be charged via the USB port from a USB power bank, for example, and they can run while they're charging. So with a USB power bank, you could run for as long as you want. The goggles too have a dot LED display on the left-hand side that displays the channel that you're on. Of course, if you're inside the goggles, you can see the channel that you're on easily. The convenience of this dot display is that other people People who might wonder what channel you're on, such as other pilots who are getting ready to fly, can easily see it. Uh, the Goggles Integra have removed that. The Goggles 2 have focus adjustment between plus two and minus eight diopters, as well as adjustable interpupillary distance, that's the width between the lenses. On the Goggles Integra, the optics modules have been replaced and they do not have the adjustable focus, although they do have adjustable interpupillary diameter. DJI has addressed this somewhat. They are gonna include a diopter set. There's a, an insert that goes over the lens in common uh, focus values and you would just pick one of those. To me, as someone who has really bad vision, I really like the goggles with adjustable focus because it means that when I hand my goggles off to somebody else to fly, or if somebody else has the goggles and they hand them to me so I can like, hey, something's going on with my quad, I can just quickly turn the knob, adjust the focus, and we can go. With diopter inserts, as long as I'm the only one using the goggles, they work fine. And in fact, custom-made diopter inserts can have your exact prescription as opposed to just a sort of generic focus value. Although fo generic focus values seem to work okay for me. I don't have a ton of astigmatism in my prescription. But as soon as I start having to hand goggles off to somebody else, I immediately appreciate that focus adjustment. This is probably one of the features of the Goggles Integra that I would miss the most from the Goggles 2. But for $150 savings, I'm not sure it would be a deal breaker for me. The field of view of the Goggles Integra is another consequence of that changed optics module. The Goggles Integra only has a 44 degree field of view, whereas the Goggles 2 have a 51 degree field of view. What this means for you is that the image that you see inside the goggles is gonna be just a little bit smaller. For those who couldn't get a clear screen on the Goggles 2, because the image was so big that they couldn't get their eyes to focus uh, on all of the screen at once, it may be that the small smaller field of view actually lets people see an edge-to-edge -edge crisp picture. This is something we can't really predict, but with other FPV goggles, we have seen the case that smaller FOV oftentimes is more sharp edge-to-edge, -edge, and larger FOV is a little bit more sensitive to the face placement. The screen size and resolution and refresh rate of the Goggles Integra is exactly the same as that of the Goggles 2. 1080p screens up to 100 hertz in uh, refresh rate. 
It's very difficult to find a picture of the right-hand side of the goggles to show you another thing that the Integra has removed. On the goggles too, there is a touchpad here on the right side, and you swipe and tap on the touchpad to move through the menus. The goggles Integra have replaced that with a joystick, which is presumably being covered up by this antenna. On the left side, there is a battery readout LED, and that's it. To me, this is an upgrade. I actually find the touchpad on DJI goggles to be really annoying to use in day to day life. I'm, I'm swiping and tapping and I just like a tactile joystick, please, to use. So, fantastic. Can I get a Goggles 2 with a joystick on it? Probably not. Another feature of the Goggles 2 that's been removed is one of those things that I said you probably never used or maybe didn't even know existed. And that is the ability to stream video wirelessly to the goggles via DLNA. The Wi-Fi module has been removed from the goggles Integra as well as the speakers that would be used to play back video and the earphone jack. Uh, they currently have no support for audio and no ability to import that video wireless. I don't know, what were you, were you watching videos from your phone streaming onto your goggles? Well, if you're like the one person who did that, then you're going to need the goggles too. The goggles Integra will not work for you. We've been telling you so far about things that DJI took out of the goggles too to make the goggles Integra, but there's one thing that they added that has a lot of people in an uproar, and that is the GPS receiver. Now, let's be really clear. The reason that the goggles Integra have a GPS receiver on board is that in the United States, as of September 2022, that's last September, manufacturers of complete ready-to-fly drones are required to comply with the rules for standard remote ID. And what that means is that during flight, the drone has to broadcast the position of itself and the position of the control station, or rather the pilot. The way that DJI has handled this in the past has been to require the pilot to plug their phone into the Goggles 2 and the DJI Fly app boots up and reports the location of the pilot. It uses the phone's location services up to the goggle and to the drone. But that's pretty cumbersome. Uh, I, everybody I know who has a Nevada who did the firmware update that activated remote ID, uh, it's such a hassle to have to pull your phone out, put it in your pocket, plug the USB into the goggles instead of just turning on the goggles and going and flying. So for those people, for people who fly the Avada, the Goggles Integra are a huge upgrade. And some people are going to sell their Goggles too and buy the Goggles Integra instead just to avoid having to plug their phone in in order to fly their Avada. But for those who fly the O3, this has raised a lot of questions. And I want to address those questions here in this video. Does the presence of this GPS unit in the Goggles Integra imply that DJI is going to force users of the O3 Air unit to use remote ID. In fact, the worst case scenario that people are imagining is a scenario where if you use the O3 Air unit in a self-built quadcopter, not a Nevada, that's a different, remember, the United States rules require self-built drones to have a remote ID module on board beginning in September 2023, and they require ready-to-fly drones to do standard remote ID, which has different rules, starting in September 2022. So is DJI going to prevent the O3 air unit from working until people plug in a GPS receiver or have GPS location to report? No. Obviously, I can't predict the future with 100% certainty, but I don't think that that's going to happen, and I'm going to tell you the reason why. Number one, having GPS in these goggles doesn't mean anything about DJI's future plans for support of remote ID. Because if DJI wanted to force you to report your location for any reason, they could just force you to plug in your phone and turn on the DJI Fly app. If they wanted to do that, whether the goggles do or don't have GPS in them isn't the thing that is going to decide that they are or are not going to do that. The reason that DJI requires you to report your location with the Avada is that the rules, the federal government made rules that said that they have to. That is the reason they did it. For all the things that DJI does that people see as maybe violations of privacy or just in, like they geofence and you're like, ah, I just want to fly my drone wherever I want. Damn you, DJI. The main reasons that they do these things are because number one, they are required to by a government rule or number two, it's good for their business. And in this case, forcing users of the O3 air unit to comply with standard remote ID is neither required by United States rules 
nor would it be good, in fact, be bad for business because it would piss people off. I do think there's a possibility that DJI will make the O3 support remote ID in the future, and I think that's a good thing. And I'm going to tell you why. But before I tell you why I think DJI supporting remote ID in the O3 Air unit would be a good thing, I'd like to tell you why I think you signing up for my Patreon would be a good thing. Uh, Patreon is the best way for you to support the work that I do here. If you value the information that I give you, if I help you solve problems, if I help you buy the right product, or if I just entertain you while you're going throughout your day, the single best way for you to say thank you is to join my Patreon. You can subscribe for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it, just pick an amount that you think is proportional to the amount of value that you get from my content. Head on over to the link in the video description, patreon.com, and sign up. I'd love to have you as a supporter. We know that the O3 Air unit is physically capable of acting as a remote ID module. It, the Avada doesn't have a dedicated remote ID module, sort of a standalone piece of hardware. The radios in the O3 and the goggles and so forth, they're what's known as a software-defined radio or SDR. And what that means is that in software, they can kind of make this radio do whatever they want it to do. So when they want it to act like a remote ID broadcast module, it'll just do that. And if DJI were to do that, that would be a good thing for users who want to comply with the rules. If you want to comply with the rules, then come September 2023, your self-built drones will need a remote ID module. And that will be a piece of hardware that you will need to spend money on and you will need to install it on your quad and it'll kind of be a pain in the butt to figure out where to put it and get it all mounted up. If DJI were to make the O3 capable of doing that, then people who want to comply with the rules could easily do that without adding any additional hardware and without uh, spending any additional money. But uh, people who are concerned about the privacy implications and who don't intend to follow the rules, they have reason to be concerned if they think that DJI will force the O3 to act as a remote ID module, but I don't see that happening. If DJI does add remote ID capability to the O3 Air unit, it will surely be optional. It will be something that you can turn on or turn off. Unlike the Avada, which is required to broadcast by US rules, standalone uh, modules installed on self-built drones, it's up to the user to decide which module they're gonna use. There's no reason why DJI would say, if you have an O3, you must be using remote ID and it must be our device. I don't see it happening. In summary then, the Goggles Integra is a slightly lighter, slightly less feature-rich version of the Goggles 2. You can use it with any aircraft that the Goggles 2 will work with, and it will pretty much deliver the same core functionality. The few features that are missing are probably things that a lot of people weren't using or won't miss or will be able to find a workaround for. And frankly, if I was buying today, I would really find myself struggling to shell out $650 for the Goggles goggles too, when I could get the goggles Integra for $150 less. If you decide to pick up one of these goggles, there are links down in the video description below this video, and it sure would mean a lot if you use those links because they are affiliate links. What that means is whenever you make any purchase at the affiliated vendor, after you click that link, I get a small uh, commission. It doesn't cost you anything extra. The vendor just gives me a little bit of a kickback. You could call it a kickback, I'm not, I'm not shy, uh, for sending you their way. And on something as expensive as the Goggles Integra, that amount can really be substantial. But even on smaller purchases, it does add up. So it sure does mean a lot if you click those links before you make any purchase. If you've been holding off on buying the O3 system because maybe the goggles have been too expensive, maybe this is the thing that's going to get you over the edge and you'd like to see a full review of it. I'm going to put a card on screen with a link to my review of the O3 Air unit when it first came out. As well, I'd like to show you a little bit of a shootout I did between the O3, the Walk Snail, and uh, some other systems so you can see how they perform in a head-to-head. -head. There's cards on screen for those, or if for some reason you can't see the cards, there's also links where else down in the video description.